This is a presentation of BSRN, Box Studios Radio Network. The Power Play Post Show is on the air, covering minor league hockey since 2003, and now covering the Binghamton Black Bears, with news, reactions, and in-depth interviews only heard here. And now, from the Box Studios in Kirkwood, New York, here is your host of the Power Play Post Show, Bob Howard. And hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Power Play Post Show. This is the show for May 5th, 2024. This is season 13, episode number 44. And this is episode 429 in the long running podcast that is the Power Play Post Show. Hello, everybody. I am Bob Howard. Welcome to the show. Great to have you here. We got a great interview that we're going to be getting to in just a few seconds and everything. But obviously the Binghamton Black Bears, they are traveling back to Binghamton, New York right now from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, where they took both games in the finals here for the Commissioner's Cup. And we're going to get to our guest here in just a few seconds. But let me get through the must-reads first because I want to get right to him. The Power Play Post Show is on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Pocket Cast, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio. Just search Power Play Post Show on whichever platform you listen to your podcast and subscribe. Please join the Power Play Post Show Facebook group. Just go to Facebook and search for the Power Play Post Show. Check out BinghamtonHockey.net for all your Binghamton hockey information and curiosity. And on this edition of the Power Play Post Show, I'm glad he's here and he hasn't coughed yet, which is great. He hasn't giggled yet either, which is which is good too. He's from the Fed League Flash. He is Gary Ryan. He's Basically, the only other person really covering the series as much as maybe we here at the Power Play Post Show. Gary, uh, good morning. Good Sunday morning to you. And obviously, the Binghamton Black Bears are probably feeling pretty good right now. (laughs) Uh, I I, I know how good that we, the fans, are feeling. So I I would imagine that's uh, probably amplified like times 10 compared to what we're feeling. No, absolutely. And uh, before we get to our thoughts on the games themselves and, you know, we break them down a little bit and analyze them and stuff and everything, um, I expected a split. I didn't expect for them to take both games. Are you a little bit surprised as I am that the Black Bears are walking away being up to nothing in this series? Uh, Confession time. I am very surprised. And, no, this is not me doubting that the Black Bears aren't able to uh, to win. But, uh, I mean, Carolina is a darn gl- good club. You know, they just beat the best team, g- consensus-wise, uh, in the league, mm-hmm. uh, as, uh, at least by stats. They beat the best team in the league to get here. And um, they haven't been flat or anything like that, but uh, we've obviously taken control of both games. And, yeah, so I, I, I'm surprised at, the, at just how well the Black Bears performed. Yeah, I, I am too. Um, I, to, 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 to the degree that they've come out of the gate in both games really strong, really fast, something that they – kind of struggled a little bit, especially on Friday night games away. If you take a look historically, Friday night games away, they've usually come out kind of slow and have had Mm -hmm. to build up to the third period where all of a sudden they come on and they come back and win a lot of those Friday night games on the road, but not because of the first period, but more because of what they've done in the second and the third period. So I was a little bit surprised as well. Before we get to our thoughts in the game, okay, so May 10th, Friday at 7 p.m. is Game 3, and then Games 4 and 5, if needed, will happen on May 11th at 7 p.m. and May 12th, 6 p.m. That is Sunday. Um, Hopefully, instead, we're probably, you know, watching a parade on Sunday instead. You know, that would be nice. Because it would be nice if they finished up on a Friday and and did a parade. And not not these midweek parades. those, Those are tough. Those are tough. Those yeah. are tough. I'm just saying. But let, let's beyond that. Let's talk about Friday night. Um, a five three win in Carolina. And like I said, the Black Bears have struggled um, sometimes to get going on Friday night 
at an away place or an away game. But in the first period, they got three goals. What were your thoughts after that first period in Carolina on Friday night? Uh, my immediate thoughts, and then as I continued to kind of look back at it, they stayed the same. That was the best period we played all season. Really? Uh, it, it was that dominant. The four check was absolutely incredible. I have not seen uh, just a team forcing another good team into that many errors and that few chances. Um, I, I really felt like, you know, every faceoff we were winning in that first period, every time uh, the puck got in deep in the Carolina zone, we kept them up, uh, backed up there. And I know the stats say that Carolina got 17 shots on goal in that mm-hmm. first period, but they were all perimeter shots. I mean, there was, I counted two quality shots that they got on McAnanima that whole period. And because that's all that Binghamton allowed them. One of the things that I found interesting about that first period, and, and I really want to get your thoughts on it, is number one, Connor Smith continues to score goals, and he's done so. In the 12 games that the Black Bears have won in a row between everything in April and everything in May now, uh, Connor Smith has you know, really stepped up his game and kind of taken a little bit of a leadership role offensively. But really, the thing that I noticed the most about the goal scoring was that it came from the third line in that 10 forward position. Because realistically, that is what I think the Black Bears built this team on, which was that they could score at every single line and that there was no – Coach said it a, a, a few times to me. You know, there's, there's no number one. There's no number one. We all know that's not true. Tyson Kirkby, he leads the number one line on this team and everything. But Justin Samaro and Josh Fletcher chipping in in probably the most important period of this series will be the – first period of that first game and maybe the second most will be the 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 last period of whichever game that they potentially win the championship on those are the two most important periods and Justin Samaro and Josh Fletcher stepped up yeah and, and so did Andrew Logar I know uh, mm-hmm. Logar didn't get on the score sheet but he was doing all the nitty-gritty little things to help create takeaways and you know, make crisp passes and you know, chip the puck out, whatever he needed to do. And in that way, he was able to contribute yeah. as well. So yeah. he was a big part of that. Yeah, all, all, all four of those guys, I, I would say the third line and the 10 forward, just and, and you know what? And Coach Short finds a way to get them out there at the right times too. And that's the hardest part. When you're an awake coach, you know, getting matchups is very difficult when you're the away coach, um, getting that all set up and everything. But I, I think Coach Sherwood has done a pretty good job of that. Now, in the first game, though, let's let's talk about individual uh, an, an, an individual performance first. Gus Ford should not be playing at this level of pro hockey. No. He is no. – I mean, he, but he's done it consistently for three years now. Three straight years he's played more time here, and I don't understand why. He's got a great shot. He's – He's a big boy that can skate, and I just think that his individual effort in game one just cannot be underestimated. No, no, and, you know, a a big part of what really set him him loose, basically, is I'm not sure what happened to Roman Kramer. Uh, Mm -hmm. Roman Kramer is kind of an MIA. And I'm not sure why, because he had a great year. He, he, um, yeah. Uh, and, and but so, you know, Coach Harrison, credit to him, he recognized this isn't working. I got to I got to retool. So he puts Keplinger on uh, Ford's wing, and all of a sudden, you know, magic has happened. Yeah, and that, and that happened. That, that, that was really. And that happened in the second period, right? They made that change it, in the second period. Yeah. yeah. Yep, at the very beginning of the second period, uh, right from the get-go, uh, from the opening draw of the, of the second period. 
Uh, he scores on he scores shorthanded, and then he scores obviously uh, uh, two other goals later on in the third period. Uh, what was interesting is Dan Stone got that power play goal, a fluke goal. I know Gus uh, Ford had a fluke goal as well. Uh, something about the boards, the stanchions, hitting it just the right way. Back in the old days, now you you would remember this because you're you're an oldie like I am when it comes to Binghamton hockey. Our boards were kind of like that, where there were times when they would have those weird ricochets when all they're trying to do is hit the puck around the boards to come around to the other side to maybe set up another player, to set up a play or whatever it might be. And all of a sudden, the puck just goes bing and just kind of ricochets off and everything. And that's kind of what happened with the Dan Stone goal. And I mentioned this in my day after game report. Sometimes you have to be lucky to win championships as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, agreed. And uh, now you, you go back to the series against Motor City. Uh, uh, Tomer's shot wasn't so much luck, no. but you know it was such a low percentage shot, and he took the risk. You know, it, and, and it just seemed like the hockey gods were with us. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Um, it, but yeah, and and, the, and then when I saw Stone's goal go, uh, go in, you know, you saw that look on uh, Cavalier's yeah. face. It just how? How did that happen? <laughs> it was incredible. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. So in the second period, obviously there was the there was the double minor that happened at the end of the first period, which carried over. Gus Ford gets the shorthanded goal, and we've we've seen it multiple times this season. It's it's something that the Black Bears can't shy away from, which is that sometimes when they're on the power play. They let a guy squeak by, go in between, you know, the two defensemen up top or the two players up top, and steal, a, steal, a, steal a thing, and then you basically have a shootout after that, right? Yeah. And you know, I'm not saying that Connor has had the most success in the shootout, but he's gotten better as the latter yeah. part of the season went along. Because in the first part of the season, you know, we were losing shootout games, usually just one goal, right, given up. But it's 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 a mental thing that when you don't know that somebody's coming and then all of a sudden there he is, it's very difficult. Yeah. But they get the shorthanded goal um, as part of that double minor that they were uh, trying to, uh, you know, kill on the penalty kill for the Thunderbirds. And then Dan Stone gets that power play goal. It's It almost seems like it's like those two goals kind of like balance each other out. Well... In a way, yes, but I think really emotionally that that stone goal was just so perplexing to Carolina. Sure. I really think it broke them. Uh, I mean, I know they, you know, well, I know Guess Ford came back and got on the board a couple more times, but uh, it just really seemed like that took a lot of wind out of Carolina's sails when that happened. No, it certainly did. Now, it, when we when we look at the end of that game, all right, so it, it finishes 4-3, and the the Black Bears obviously go one up, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, they secured the split. This is, this is exactly what I was saying. Get a split down in Carolina, come back and finish it in Binghamton, right? Um, and, I, and, and that was very successful and everything. I think Connor McAnanima – um, he went toe to toe with basically uh, Mario. That's what it really comes down uh-huh. to. He went toe to toe because you have a guy who's already proven himself in Mar- Mario Cavallari, right? He's a proven goaltender. Cody uh, Karpinski, proven goaltenders. Brendan Colgan, proven, right? Connor yeah. ha- played the, the, the out of all the elite goaltenders, if we call them elite, here in the FPHL. Connor played the least amount of games, right? Because of the three goalie system that that Brent had in there. However, the one thing that we always said about Connor versus maybe Nolan or maybe versus Sam for that matter was that he was so calm, cool, collected in any tough situation he was put in in the regular season. And I think that has helped him in the playoffs, especially uh, game two in Motor, or against Motor City and then these two games so far. Can you talk a little bit about what, as a former goalie yourself, your impressions of how Connor has played in the playoffs so far? I am envious because I wish I had figured out mental fortitude when I was playing like what Connor is having. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it goes back throughout the whole year. Um, 
Yeah, Connor didn't give up many bad goals. Uh, there were a couple here and there. Sure. But it seems like when that would happen, he was able to immediately just mentally reset and just think to himself, all right, that was a mistake. It's done. We go on. And just be able to push ahead past that. Um, I, I, and that's a quality that is just in you. You either have it or you don't. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, you can kind of try and encourage a, a player to be that way if you're a coach. But in the end, it's all got to come down to player decides I'm not going to let this get me down, and he and and just plow ahead. And Connor, just I I, I have not seen another goaltender in this league, and I'm counting everyone. I'm counting Colgan. I'm counting Bab, and I'm counting uh, Cavallari, uh, McCollum, and Danbury. None of them seem to be able to find that next mental gear like McAnanima has. It's incredible. It, it really is, and, and I've actually had a couple small conversations, other than the interview that I had with him here on the show, a couple small interactions with him outside. He is a quiet, he's a shy kid who um, you really just have to kind of push his, I don't want to say buttons, but push him to you know c- communicate and talk and stuff like that. He's kind of reserved, and I think that's kind of a benefit to him and everything because he keeps within himself and that keeps that concentration going what's interesting is, is i talked before the series started and i know you heard me say this and and i i had numbers written down the black bears were averaging 47 shots on goal in the playoffs and the carolina thunderbirds were averaging right around 32 or 34 or 35 something like that range 35. it's yep. it's kind of re, it's kind of reversed itself Right. And, yeah. and and I think part of that is because when you have the first two games and the Black Bears score so much in the first period, it changes the element of the game a little bit. And one of the things I wrote about this morning about last night's game was that when you go up so early, so quick and by so far, there's a there's something in the back of your head. It is a it is something in your subconscious mind that starts to pull you back a little bit. Now, it's the coach's job to say, be more aggressive, get in there, take the chances, we're okay. But in the player's right. mind and everything, it, it's hard to not step back and play a little bit tighter defense and try to hold the lead more so than go more aggressive and everything. And I don't think it's hurt the Black Bears yet this series. No, no. Uh, they haven't fallen back into a true a prevent defense mentality. No. Um, I, I think that they, uh, it, despite, despite the great win-loss record this year, despite how many times we've come back from a deficit or whatever, uh, they've learned from the adversity that they have faced over the course of the year. And uh, just like Mac and Anima being able to make that little mental adjustment, mm-hmm. uh, the forward the, and the, the, the decor as well, you know, they have to be able to find that next gear too. It's like, oh, you know, Ford just scored on us. All right, let's regroup, guys. Let's, you know, let's reset. Let's reexamine what we're doing, how we're doing it. We can do this. And uh, the, the Black Bears really have been able to uh, accomplish that. Um, and I think that's just, uh, a byproduct of the culture that has been created in the locker room. Yeah, I mean, uh, some of yeah. these, some of these guys were with each other for for last year as well as yep. this year, so they're comfortable with each other. But even even the even the newer players uh, and the rookies that came in this year, they just seem to be able to feed right into that and echo that that thought process and that paradigm. And you know it, it, it it's great. You know I I don't uh, I I don't see many teams really having a mental fortitude that's this strong at this level of hockey. Uh, you usually see that in the higher levels like the ECHL, AHL, NHL. But right. uh, I mean these guys are just 
you know, their 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 mindset is just so firm and set. It, it, it's wonderful. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit more about last night's game. Uh, Gavin Yates uh, again showing that you know maybe he is the most important Binghamton black bear that has played the last three seasons for the team. He's been with the team since season one. He's played more games with Binghamton now than any other team that he's played for, right? So he is almost kind of Mr. Black Bear in, in the sense he, he has not surpassed um, Nikita Ivochkin in games, but he 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 ha- he's played three, three seasons, and uh, I think the first season he only got 34 games in, but he is a guy, he's got experience. He won a championship before with Watertown. He was already leading in points coming into this game, and now he scores two goals and even, you know, the power play. I mean, the power play finally has come back a little bit for the Black Bears, which is, which is really, really important. We didn't talk about the, the importance of that Daniel Stone power play goal because it was such a fluky kind of goal. But it really kind of like, I think, you know, because they didn't score one against Motor City. But then Gavin gets one in last night's game. But that first period again really just kind of, you know, maybe deflated Carolina just a bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the one thing you see in the playoffs across the league is that uh, when when you get to this time of year, the power play numbers go down, the penalty yes. kill numbers go up. Yep. Um, and so, you know, it, 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 regardless of what team you're playing on, you kind of expect that, you're going to be able to kill off a man advantage uh, in the playoffs because you know just you, you're you're running on all cylinders. Your defensive system is is running good and and whatnot. And then, oops, yeah, something fluky like that happens. Wait a minute, how on earth could we let that happen? And you start to second guess yourself a little bit. Yeah. You know, you start thinking, well, are are we not you know are we not running our coverages right you know with somebody out of place did somebody miss an assignment <laughs> and, and uh you know that can really mess with your head i i've written and talked about gavin Yates being probably one of the most important part of, uh, about uh, people on this team tyson kirkby as well and and in, it took tyson until the sixth game to get on the score sheet with a goal and everything but you know he he gets the game winner in a sense at the um the end with the the power play um I, actually my apologies uh he got the game winner yeah he got the game winner right yeah he got the game winner yeah cuz uh, they oh, scored three I yeah it was kirkby actually yeah kirkby gets the game winner um yeah i had to blow up my uh, image to 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 see it a little bit better but gavin gets two tyson gets two they both score on the power play and tyson gets the game winner and i i said previously that when Tyson scores this series it's going to mean something it's going to matter mm-hmm. it's going to be that character now there's two parts here i want you to touch upon a number 1 Tyson finally scoring and everything but the other part is teams and players and fans around the league absolutely despise Tyson i don't see anybody on the black bears get more hate and vigor from the league, essentially, than Tyson does. And yet, to me, other than Gavin Yates, maybe even Donald Oliveri for just being a jackass on the ice and just getting everybody stirred up, everything, Tyson's the most important person for this team. And, you know, without a doubt, is probably the MVP of the whole season, even though Gavin Yates might be the MVP of the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, well... Kirkby uh, is the FPHL version of Brad Marsha. Um, he, he's, he's, quote unquote, a rat. He gets under your skin. He's an <laughs> agitator. But he also can score, and you know, he, he's going to put the dagger in your heart one way or another. He's either going to uh, mess with your mind and force you into taking a dumb penalty so you're in the sin bin. Or he's just going to say, okay, you know, I'm going to put one home, you know, a key situation here. I'm going to put my team up on this on the scoreboard. And, uh, you know, he's able to do it. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, if, if he's on your team, you love that. If, if he's not, you despise it. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it, it's uh, something that I know Kirk B., uh, he, he wears that with pride. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's pretty evident. Um, that he knows what he's doing, um, and he's been very fortunate in that it hasn't really 
bitten him in the butt. It's always, you know, he's, he's been just good enough to uh, make sure that he's the beneficiary of that, and his team is the beneficiary of that. Now, so um, he's learned that through, yeah. through experience and leadership. Now, in your uh, your uh, YouTube podcast earlier today, you mentioned um, about the deflating and kind of the slowing down of the process of Carolina when uh, I think it was Josh Keplinger, when he hit uh, Connor McEnanima in the head with a puck, it broke a buckle on his helmet, and that kind of slowed things down because Dylan uh, Konecki, who is great, equipment manager, had to then oh do Lord. repairs on the helmet. And I've heard some fans, and I want to address this first. Some fans have said, oh, well, if the referees would have called a penalty or put the other goaltender in or whatever. They were they were looking for a penalty there. They were looking for a power play. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I, I don't respond sometimes to those things. I read them, and then it, it goes into my body, and I shake it out because it just drives me bonkers. Because if you've watched the NHL, the AHL, and maybe even the ECHL, yes, those rules are in place. If a goaltender can't play or they're taking too long trying to do something, you either have to replace them or you take a two-minute power play. It's never called, people. It's never no. called. They no. take care of the goaltender. He gets 100-mile-an-hour shots thrown at him all the time, it, whether it was Cavalieri or Kopinski or Egbert or Connor McAnanima, or Brendan Colgan, they're going to stop and let them try to repair it. He tried to put on Eggie's head. There's no way that thing was going to fit. One's got a wicked (laughs) small head. The other one's got, like, hair, more hair than Chewbacca, for Christ's sakes, and everything. And I love Eggie, and I love his hair, and I think his hair is phenomenal and everything. But the helmet is not going to fit, so they needed to fix it. He puts on Eggie's helmet for about 40 seconds, goes back out there. But you made a very good point. This really did affect the way Carolina uh, was generating so much, a little bit of momentum at the end of the game, and then it kind of fizzled out a little bit because of that. Yeah, in the playoffs, uh, momentum is everything. everything. And you know, okay, you're down two goals. You just uh, you, know, you, you took the risk. You pulled your goalie with five minutes left. Yeah. You immediately score, and you're thinking, "All right, we're on. We're on the train. We're going. We're going. We're going." And now you sit and wait and wait and wait. Yeah. <laughs> and that yeah. So you know, as as I looked at that, and, and I'm watching the situation unfold. And what did I? Uh, what did I? Fa- and what did I ask yeah, you? What I asked you? you yeah. Yeah, you sent me the messages like, "Who does this benefit?" I said, yep. "Oh, it definitely benefits us." Yeah, uh, yeah, because uh, you know, uh, first of all, from Carolina's aspect, they just want to go. Yeah. They they want to get this whole thing moving and just lay it on because throughout the year they've scored goals in bunches, so they knew if they were able to get one, they could get another one really quick if they had been allowed to. Uh, if you're the Black Bears, that gave you time to sit at the bench, regroup, and say, "Hey, go out, hey guys, let's let's settle down. We know they're going to come at us hard and fast, but let's just stick to our game plan. Let's you know make sure we've got each other's back. However much time this takes, so be it. We'll be ready when when the puck drops." And, and uh, you really saw the uh, the psychological impact right there. Uh, it really made a big difference at the end because after that point, even after play continued, uh, Carolina was not able to sustain any pressure in the Binghamton zone despite having the goalie pulled and the extra attacker. They just couldn't, you know, they couldn't maintain enough possession. Now, Coach Harrison has won a championship three times as a player, one time as a coach. The Danville Dashers was the last time he won a championship. Think 2016-2017 season. Uh, He definitely is somebody with a lot of experience at all different kinds of levels. Um, He's a good hockey mind. He was making adjustments in in these two games. But I think the Black Bears, it's something that – you kind of mentioned earlier in this podcast, and I, and I want to really emphasize it and everything. The Black Bears may not have the best goalies. They may not have the, the, the biggest goal scorers, right? 
But what they probably do have is the team that plays together the best as a team. And the systems uh-huh. that are in place that Brant Sherwood has put in, they follow it. And when they execute it, they win. When they don't execute it, they lose. And we've we've seen that definitely this season and everything. Um, your thoughts on on that comment there? Um, you know, well, yeah, you, you you just mentioned you know the Bing, uh, the Black Bears might not have the best goalies, or maybe they do. Um, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. No, that's fair. Um, I mean, you know, reputation goes a long way, but uh, Henrik Lundqvist, how many cups did he win? Mm. You know, great, great goalie. You won, you know, one, you know, yeah. con- consensus, that's one fair. of the best. That's but fair. He, he never won a championship. Cavalieri, you know, he's had a couple of great regular seasons, but when it comes to the playoff times, uh, he just – hasn't been able to get it done, whether that's his fault or not. You know, they, you could argue about, but um, it's it, it's all about believing in yourself and in your teammates. And I don't doubt that Carolina has a very good uh, culture in their locker room. I mean, a lot of these guys sure. have been together for five, six years, but. There's just something about when you start right from the get-go at the very beginning of the year and you know everybody is on the same page, like Brant has had the Black Bears on the same page all year round, uh, that, that just carries so much weight and it can carry you through so much. And, you know, it makes you better physically and mentally and... <laughs> You know, there you go. So, you know, I, I really believe that to this point, as surprised as I am that we're at a, a 2 nothing situation here instead yeah. of a split, um, I really believe that by far the better team is the one that's on top. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. So I, I wrote it down a couple questions I wanted to ask you specifically now that we're done with two games. What are the surprises from this series for, so far for you? Um, the, the, the the biggest surprise to me is, um, and it's a, it's a pleasant one mm-hmm. for the Black Bears that they have been able to maintain uh, their their team discipline. That they haven't given in to the uh, the ticky tacky uh, sure. uh, retaliatory penalties. Uh, that they've kept themselves out of the box in in key situations, yeah, uh, and that that's that's been a big part of things. Uh, I'm also really uh, pleasantly surprised by just how uh, how intense the team has been in in a good way yeah. and in a controlled way, yeah, uh, with their energy level. Um, for Carolina, the biggest surprise to me is that we have seen so many players that had really good seasons just kind of fall off the face of the earth. Mm-hmm. Um, Jacob Schnapp yep. has been a non-factor. Um, just a one, just a one penalty. Non-factor. Well, you know, you, yeah. you mentioned Jacob Schnapp. He just had that one penalty that did cost you know his his team, but otherwise really has been a non-factor. And you mentioned Roman Kramer yeah. as well. I'll let you continue and everything. I just – those two guys really, I thought, were going to be – I mean, earlier in the season, if you mentioned Roman, Roman Kramer's name, and especially when he was going up, getting the call up to the SP, you're like, oh, my God, what's that going to do to the, the to the Thunderbirds? But, again, like you said, non-factor. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, okay, so you've, you've had a couple of fan outs. You've had Gus Ford. You know, you, you've had the check line. Uh, they, they were – they were great last night, um, but beyond that, you're not getting any contributions from your your third line. I mean, John Butita centering the third line. Yeah. He was second in assists last year, yeah. uh, last season, uh, and this year it, it just he, you know we just haven't seen him out there. And that's um, their captain a lot of too. Players that, and that's their captain. Yeah, there's been a lot of players that are invisible out there. Yeah, I totally, I totally agree with you. Um, okay, so expectations for this upcoming Friday's game. How do you think Coach Harrison is going to adjust what his team does on the road in Binghamton on Friday night? 
Uh, first of all, I am about 99% certain that we will see Karpinski in goal. Really? Um, yeah. Um, I mean, Karpinski has won a cup, so he, he has that experience. And uh, Cavallari really, since returning from the SP, really didn't seem to have the trust of Harrison. Uh, maybe that's my perception, but I just haven't seen that. I've seen him uh, giving it more opportunities to Karpinski, and it just happened that Cavallari got hot in the playoffs and ran off three or four really, really spectacular games. So he earned the trust back, but then, you know, last night, well, that was it, you know. And 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 I don't think you can fault uh, Cavallari for two of those three goals that he surrendered last night. Sure. Uh, the, 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 the one was fluky, and the other was just a total breakdown by the defense. Um, but, um, so yeah, Karpinski, I, I, I would be very surprised if Cavallari is in goal. Any, uh, any other adjustments that you think he'll do to the lines? Because I think keeping the check line together is very important. I thought they played well last night, like you said as well. Um, I, I thought, I thought they were just able to move the puck and they worked well together. Uh, you know, when they needed to forecheck and back check, they did a really good job at the, all three of those guys. They're very talented talented, talented players and everything. But how do you get the top line of Gus Ford and those guys rolling again? How, how, how does, what does Coach Harrison have to do to get them going? Um, I think Harrison has done all he can do. Uh, i I, I got to be honest. I think Carolina has run out of gas. Sure. Um, the, one of the biggest disadvantages that I think, I, I think this is, I personally think this has been Harrison's only mistake that he has made this entire season because he's done a great job with with the team. But he has said, I'm going to keep my lineup razor thin down to a minimum. I'm not going to bring in extra guys. You know, I'm going to I'm going to put all my trust and faith in these guys. And now he really doesn't have an answer for when you have all your depth scoring disappearing there's, like it has. Right, there's no and extra it, screwdrivers in the toolbox. It, exactly. I mean, the, the only player that did not play last night was Chris Siolik. Um, the, the, their roster is 19. That's it. Yeah. And I really think he did himself a disservice because now he doesn't have any other tools available in the toolbox to pull out and say, we can put this together and make this work. I think he's out of options. You've got you've got Ford on the first line. You've got the check line, and that's it. That's really all you've got. And defense is razor thin. Um, you know, the third pairing hardly played at all last night. So he's he's gassing four guys, uh, giving them you know fifty five to sixty available minutes. Mm-hmm. So and I know, don't and I don't care I, how good I, you are as a goaltender when you have players uh, in, in front of you that cannot make the blocks, cannot clear the puck, cannot plug up the lane as much. The grade A chances go up for Binghamton, and that's uh-huh. that's the part that really is tough. And yeah, I know a lot of the goal scoring for Binghamton has been in the first period, but some of the more important goals have happened not in the first period. Right, so yeah. that's yeah, exactly. that's that, that's that's an important part of this um, for Coach Sherwood. I mean, obviously, he's got a, the only real changes he's made is he's had Justin Samara win uh, for three games uh, because of uh, Cam Clark not being able to be available this weekend, and of course, he he, he shifted him in for Blake Tosto on one game. So uh, Justin Samara, one of those black ace guys who. Literally played a good portion of the season here, played a little bit up in the SP, came back and everything, and uh, just finds a way to get things done on the ice. And he does a little bit of everything. Maybe not to the exact degree of Andrew Logar, who I hold in really high esteem for a third-line guy, but Justin Samaro has really stepped up in the last couple games. Yeah, yeah, he has. And again, it's just in the, in the little details. But every team needs that guy yeah. who's who's fine with, okay, I don't show up on the score sheet a whole lot, but I do the little things to make sure that I'm helping my team and I'm contributing that way in the unseen ways. 
and uh, Samaro's done a great job with that. Pasto's got, done a great job with that. Uh, you know, late in the regular season, uh, you know, the, the, all the black aces, they, they had that mindset, and it's like, well, you know, I'd like to score, but if I don't, that's okay. Yeah. You know, as, long as, I'm, as long as I'm chipping in. Uh, without a doubt. All right, well, you know, that's the coverage for the first two games. Um, Gary, obviously you're going to be doing a lot of stuff on Facebook Live and I'm going to guess on uh, YouTube uh, this week, uh, you know, really prepping people for games three, four, and potentially five, or potentially four and five if, if need be and everything. So what does your schedule look like for this week for the Fed League Flash? Um, okay, well, uh, I, I, Spotify, um, I, I finished that up uh, just because, uh, unfortunately, I don't have the ability to record on Spotify at, uh, after next month anyway. Explain, explain um, that to people. You, you actually use their tools to do the recording, and you sometimes do it uh, mobily instead of being in front of a microphone, you know, in front of in, in a desk like I do here, which is the reason why I'll continue to use Spotify and everything. Right. But for you, you do a lot of mobile recording. Sometimes you're in the truck. Sometimes you're in your car. Sometimes, you know, but you, you use their software essentially to record. That's what they're discontinuing, yeah. where that's yeah. why the PowerPlay Post Show can continue in in that fashion because I record here in a studio and then, you know, push it out to, to them and use them to distribute it. So that's why you're ending Spotify, but. Right. Right. Uh, you know, it, it, it was a great easy tool because I am a technological dummy. Uh, <laughs> and, and I freely admit that. Um, I, I, I really am. Um, so, I mean, the fact that the, the Spotify software had everything right there was like, you're 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 using a phone just like a tape recorder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like growing up, you you, you break oh, out your old tape recorder and you know hit record and do your pretend radio show. Um, you know, I mean, that's what I was doing, and it's like, well, that's gone. Uh, but uh, not only that, but you know, now we're wrapping up the season. Uh, I'm not going to be broadcasting or, or putting something out there on social media every single day. Um, this next week, basically, um, I'm, I'm taking tomorrow off. Good, uh, good. You deserve compiling it. Some, <laughs> compiling some notes. Uh, Tuesday morning, I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live talking about some of the news from around the league. Sure. Um, outside of the series, but also touching on some things with the series. And, uh, um, you know, if I get any information regarding something that's going to be going on Friday, you know, I'll mention that. Um, then the next thing I think I have planned is my preview, my scouting preview on Friday, and then we'll and that'll be on Facebook video. Live, or will that be on YouTube? Uh, if the, Facebook Live. Okay, yeah. cool, uh, cool. That that's the that's the uh, the widest audience reach that I have right now. Yeah, so. it's like over a thousand people now, right? Uh, uh, just on Facebook Live, it's or Facebook, it's. Uh, about thirteen hundred. I'm gonna have to start paying for some advertising for you to mention my show on there. You know, it's like you just can't give that shit stuff away for free. It's like you should start demanding. It's like, oh, you want me to talk about your show? Oh, yeah, that's gonna cost you. Let's hear two tanks of gas to Binghamton for the uh, game three series, uh, game three, uh, and stuff like that, uh, which is great. So, so obviously you're gonna still be doing covering stuff. I'll see you because you're gonna be sitting very close to me. I think you now appreciate the. The press box view of the ice, you can see things a little bit differently. Kind of like you when you're watching from the cameraman position, when you're watching YouTube yeah. and everything. I think you really uh, appreciate that. Yeah, I think you, you, the quality of what you can see is a little bit different. Um, allows you to see the plays develop a little bit better, which you're so much better at than I am. I'm all about feels and the perceptions, <laughs> and you're about like, hey, did you see how he did a one-two-two? And 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 I'm like going. What? What? All I saw was the guy chipped it in, and that's what he's done all season long and everything. You and I see the game completely different, and not in a bad way. Not in a bad way. We well, just we read well, the, we read the game a little differently. And 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 that's partly because of when you know we were playing in our youth. Uh, sure, you're, you're a forward. You're seeing things more from that perspective. I'm a goaltender. You know, I, I'm sitting back and I'm seeing. Systems. You know, everything is in front of me. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm able to read, you know, something going off, uh, going on all over in the corner or whatever, where, you know, maybe a, a forward might miss. But then again, you know, forwards see things that goaltenders can miss, too. Um, but I, I tell you what, uh, with, with sitting, uh, sitting up there up at the top, 
Uh, not only do I love being able to see everything on the ice develop, but I feel like I'm able to soak in more of the fans' uh, energy. And it, it, it's kind of a, like, a, like a bird's eye view of them as well, and just kind of being able to soak that all in. And I, I just love it. I, I've fallen in love with that perspective. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad you have. I, I appreciate you being there, listen to me cuss and say bad things. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's funny. I think the off-ice officials, they get a kick out of me uh, being up there and everything. So, um, I, and it's, you know, I try to keep it to a minimum as much as I can because I'm usually busy typing something up or whatever. Uh, matter of fact, Gary's come up to me and said, oh, well, when you're done typing. When you're done typing, it's like okay, sorry, dude. But uh, uh, honestly, I can't believe the season's almost over. I'm kind of glad the season's almost over. I'm a little tired. I'm ready to get some re- relax and uh, rest and everything. But uh, I, I, I'm. I, it's crazy to think that it's it's almost over. Now, I do want to mention for the fans out there. Uh, this upcoming Wednesday, the Black Bears will hold a press conference. It's going to be really the media people being able to go in, ask uh, Coach Sherwood some questions, and a, a few select players will be there. So we'll get some audio from that for the, the next Power Play Post Show, which will be obviously on Thursday as we talk a little bit more about um, the Friday game and what that might mean. Um, also on Wednesday, so Tuesday's the pl- uh, sorry Tuesday's the players and the head coach, and then um, on Wednesday – uh, Andreas Johansson will be available uh, for us to talk to and everything. So I will be there for both things, getting some audio here for the Power Play Post Show for on Thursday so you guys can listen to that. Um, I really have enjoyed this season so much. This has been such a fun season, not just because the teams are winning, but because of the stories that we've told with the players and the writing that I've been doing and just you know getting people like Gary on. Gary, you've been amazing this season. I, I think what you've changed into from just doing the Binghamton Black Bears fan podcast thing, whatever you called it back in the original start of it, to what you've come to today has been just awesome. It's great for the league, whether they re- recognize it or not, whether Don Kernan or, or, or Sarge or whoever appreciates it, it's really good for the league. You take a little bit of hate from some of the fans within the league, um, but then I think there's a lot of people that rely on the information that you provide. And not just the information, not the news that you might break or something like that, like the Elmire situation, but really how you present it, right? And I think that's really, really, really important is how you present yourself and everything, because perception is very important, but how you present the news and the information, like, you know, you don't go out there and go, hey, guess what? Elmira's gone. Yahoo! You know, it's like, no. Here's oh, no, the... Here's the, no. here's the that, that, that sucks. No, and, that but, really sucks. but people do that, but, <laughs> but people do that and yeah. everything, and you, you're not... That's not your style. That's not the way you go. So, I think it's, you know, if, if no one else is going to say it, I'm going to say it. We appreciate you here on the Power Play Post Show. It's why I keep bringing you back, and you keep getting better and better and better i i I appreciate that and you know i mean you know the 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 whole thing that i i i hope that i am properly conveying is okay yes i'm a black bears fan sure they're my team so i i love i love the game so much more and i love finding out things about uh, different players on the different teams and it's just such a neat experience and you know, it's gotten to the point where now I can, you know, have Facebook conversations with uh, different players on different teams. I've been able to meet a few of them and talk with them right. and, and get to know them and get to know and meet some of the fans uh, that come in, you know, if they're traveling from uh, different, uh, different arenas. It, it's great. I love it. And, you know, I can't imagine not doing it. Well, I hope you continue. I'm going to definitely continue um, throughout the summertime, and I'll definitely have you on probably even after uh, the finals is complete to get our final thoughts on that. But, Gary, thank you very much again. I really appreciate you coming on. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. And, you know, I, I, I absolutely love that you brought back the show. Yeah. You know, I, I, thank you. <laughs> we'll pump each other up a, a little bit here. <laughs> um, you know, it, it was something that um, – you know, was, was such a great part of Binghamton hockey for so long, having the power play post show, and the fact that you know after the time off that you were uh, just, you know, I got to do this again. Yeah. I, I, I'm so glad. I'm so glad, and it's been 
a highlight of my week to be able to uh, tune into the show and listen, and uh, whether it's the interviews or even just your perspective on things, it's been it's been a great highlight of mine. Well, I appreciate that. I really do, and I, I know there's a few truckers out there because you're 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 a truck driver, and that's what you do to make a living and everything. Um, because you know the Fed League Flash and the Power Play Post Show are not raking in the dollars right at the moment. And uh, <laughs> but I, I will say this: uh, you're you're not the first trucker to tell me that he listens on the road as he's, you know people traveling around and everything. And I love that. I was like, thank you guys. I know sometimes the episodes can get a little long and everything. And Gary and I might be going a little long here than we really needed to but um, I really do believe that there's a service that we can do as people who are knowledgeable passionate about the game to help other people learn I've had fans reach out to me and say I didn't know that I didn't know that that's Mm -hmm. how that worked or 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 that's how a team sees something like this and everything and I really 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 appreciate that so Gary again thank you so much for your for all of what you've done and also coming on today and and thank you and uh I'm seeing this optimistically I'm looking forward to celebrating with you on Friday. Yeah, or Saturday or one of the days. Let, <laughs> no, let's just No, hope. not Friday. <laughs> no, for, okay, <laughs> Friday. For, on Friday. All right. So let me get through the must reads and we'll get everybody out of here. The Power Play Post shows on Spotify, Apple Podcast Podcast uh Podcast cast, wow, I can't get that out. Amazon Music and iHeartRadio. Just search Power Play Post Show on whichever platform you listen to your podcast and subscribe. Please join the Power Play Post Show Facebook group. Go to Facebook and search for the Power Play Post Show. Check out BinghamtonHockey.net for all your Binghamton hockey information and curiosity. And thank you to Rob Lapolis, our MC, John Petitucci, our musical director, and the Fed League Flashes, Gary Ryan. And for Gary Ryan, I am Bob Howard. Thank you very much for listening to the Power Play Post Show. We'll talk to you again on Thursday. for listening to this edition of the Power Play Post Show. Be sure to tune in next week to the Box Studios Radio Network for all the latest Black Bears news and interviews from around minor league hockey. The Power Play Post Show would like to thank John Patitucci for all the music you hear on the show. You've been listening to the Power Play Post Show.